Hey, what's up guys? I'm here and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2019 career mode. Episode number 75 today for the German Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous one, that had the British Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A very topsy-turvy one, but we had one of the rarest events in the game in that episode indeed, and twice, no doubt, actually, as well. Of course, the safety car came out two times there, and uh, it was an interesting one. I feel like our car, again, lost a lot of pace in the race, which is unfortunate to see, and I'm really hoping that we can just finally crack a race where we don't lose race pace. I mean, I'm not complaining that we have qualifying pace, but it's been a tad annoying to not see it kind of be able to produce the same sort of pace relative to other teams in the race, uh, or at least throughout the race, because it seems like we, our car certainly favours the softer compound of tyres. As soon as we go onto the mediums, the hards, that's when things start to unravel a little bit, which is uh, quite unfortunate, really. But the German Grand Prix has been happy hunting ground to me, and in general, it's one of the circuits I really like uh, to drive on this game, so hoping that we can have a decent one. I mean, to be fair, I was saying that last race weekend was still pretty decent decent uh, overall as a result there uh, for myself. Hamilton obviously had a bit of a torrid time there, but uh, here's hoping we can have a de uh, another solid one at least. I mean, I wouldn't uh, say no to another podium this Grand Prix, so let's just go towards qualifying then and see what we can do over one lap. Welcome to Germany for today's qualifying session at the famous Hockenheim ring. The pit lane lights will turn green in the next minute or two to signify the start of qualifying. This is a track that tends to ask quite a lot of the tyres, both front and rear. So is it fair to say a great deal of management will be needed in order to do well here? Tyre wear is always something you have to consider to a certain degree. Finding a good car balance that suits the circuit will help prolong the life of the tyre, but it's true that some circuits, such as this one, are more challenging than others. How hard you can push them depends on your strategy and how tight the battle is around you. Right, so we head into Q1, then very gloomy skies at the moment. There is some rain forecast for later on in this race weekend at the end of Sunday uh, for the race, but no forecast for Saturday. But you would say, looking at the conditions right now in the skies, that there is a probably a good chance of some rain maybe on Saturday, but uh, at the moment apparently not so. But a lot of understeer in that last sector for me. You saw there going wide a little bit through uh, the second last corner to the last corner there, and have to skate across the curb, but no less we get through into Q2 in P8. But Hamilton showing some great pace there to go P1 in the first qualifier session of the race weekend but going to Q2 then hoping for a bit more grip and we did find that I think the front end bited in a little bit more but Elta getting some more understeer on the exit into the last corner but at least we got some bite in for the second last corner but in the end it was actually so so close I thought I was comfortable that because we got up into P4 or there or thereabouts when I set that lap time and I thought okay that's going to be it but as we went to the end of the session it actually got very fine so I got very lucky I got a bit too overconfident in my uh, lap there in Q2 and we only just just make it through into the top 10 shootout. So I was so close to getting knocked out there. Uh, so we live to fight for another day. We go to the top 10 shootout then, thankfully. Uh, and this time I won't count my laurels. And obviously we have uh, enough tyres to go for two runs here on two different sets of soft tyres. So through on our first flying lap there at the moment, Max Verstappen setting the provisional pole time. There's we go through the last corner. Massive tank of oversteer this time compared to understeer. So we're getting all out of shapes in that last corner. And we're up into P3, that is. But then by the time we get through to the uh, middle of the session, we're down to P5. Pierre Gasly has now set a ridiculous time for provisional pole position. At the moment, I'm doing a decent job of getting ahead of Hamilton in P5 to his P6. But of course, everyone has to set a second lap time. So we go for that second fly. Still as dark as ever. So the track pretty cold here. So that might be a reason why I'm finding it quite tricky in sector three. We've gone purple first sector, green second sector, but only a few hundreds though. We gained some time though in the entry to sector three. As you can see in the top right, about two tenths there. And obviously we lost a lot of time in the last two corners either with understeer or as it was in that first flyer a massive amount oversteer as we go through the last corner again a massive amount oversteer we actually lose the back end and spin across the grass and the line and so we finish up the qualifying session in P6 then as I don't think uh, we even crossed the line with an improvement because of course the spin uh, basically ruined any improvement there so a very messy qualifying for me at Hockenheim that last corner I don't know what it was you know understeer in Q1 and Q2 massive amount oversteer in Q3 hopefully that's not the case in the race otherwise that's going to be quite a tricky thing to manage there, but Lucas Weber then gets provisional pole position, Hamilton in second place by only nine hundredths of a second there, so our car clearly has some very decent pace around here, it's obviously our home engine supplier, and Hamilton's showing that that car almost has the pace for whole position, so I've got some work to do to maybe catch up in the race, and I'm hoping that the, the pace stays there in the race, because that would mean Hamilton and myself can hopefully have a decent one, I've obviously, obviously got to make up more positions than he does, but uh, with uh, maybe some rain at the end of the race, 
you just can't really bet on anything. There's going to be a bit of an uncertainty there, but at least I know there's some raw pace in the car that I need to still unlock in the last sector, I think, at least. So let's move on then to Sunday and see how we do. Good afternoon and welcome to a place that is very special to us all in the Formula One community. It's the Hockenheim Ring, home of the German Grand Prix. Always good for a close scrap is Hockenheim. Think back to Alonso, Ricardo, Vettel as recently as 2014 and I'm expecting some more strong racing today. It's 2.8 miles around the Hockenheim Ring then with an average lap speed in excess of 130 miles per hour. The long curved back straight leads into a tight hairpin for the best overtaking opportunity on the circuit. But there are plenty of other options available around the 17 corners here today. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once again by Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about the engineer. That was a great podium in the last race. So can they keep that momentum going this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Great work from Lucas Weber yesterday, sees him start from pole, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Verstappen, Perez, Charles Leclerc, the engineer, Butler, Holkenberg, Norris, and Pierre Gasly, Russell, Ricardo, Sebastian Vettel, and Bottas, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Kevin Magnussen, and Roman Grosjean. Stroll and Daniel Kvyat completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid, P6 ahead of the German Grand Prix. Sunny skies at the moment, but you can see that weather forecast indicator is going to say uh, almost heavy rain right by the end of the session. So there might be a bit of an awkward few laps at the end of this race where we're on inters, uh, but it's time for the full wet. But maybe you may as well finish the race, maybe. Uh, so that will be definitely something to kind of uh, keep in mind and be a very uh, annoying issue right at the end of this race. But the first two thirds will be in the dry. So we're going from the soft tires to the mediums. And like I mentioned before, hopefully begging that the fact that our car can hopefully keep some pace on those mediums rather than losing it all as has been the case for the last two three episodes but Hamilton on the front row in second place our car has the raw speed over one lap so we're just going to try and put it to use and uh, use it hopefully in the opening lap at least to try and gain some positions from P6 is of course a little bit annoying to be down here when my teammate is up there on the front row but let's just get into this then as we go towards five red lights here at Hockenheim for the German Grand Prix the home race for our team here fire lights are out and we're on the way from P6 on the grid to slow one for us as uh, you can see there uh, Devin Butler with a great start in the Red Bull there Lando Norris also tries to have a look around my outside there so we almost lose two positions into turn one it's been a great start though for my teammate Hamilton he's in the lead of the Grand Prix Verstappen who was uh, I think uh, he's now side by side with Lucas Weber so Weber was on pole he's down to P4 so the pole man's had an absolute mare and so Hamilton leads the way for Mercedes at the German GP then you've got uh, I think Sergio Perez in second place Verstappen has got his teammate Weber and Weber now is trying to defend and keep the position there from Leclerc. We go down the inside of Devin Butler and try and get the position back that we lost to him, our old our arch nemesis from F2 uh, before the career mode of F1 began. And so he's got us so far on the exit, but can we make a move on the outside? He'll just about leave us some room. We make a little bit of contact with his rear right tyre, and so that uh, aids us a little bit in terms of, uh, he would slow down a little bit on the kerb on the inside, and we get the move done. Sparking away there, so our car maybe a little bit lower on the ride height than we kind of need to at this stage with the heavy fuel, but we're up into P6 once more, but up ahead then for the lead this Grand Prix well Hamilton's in the lead still and you can see this is a fight for P2 Sergio Perez goes very defensive to uh, Max Verstappen in the Renault in, in P3 there and these two fighting is just going to help Hamilton out so, so at the moment so far this season you've got to admit Hamilton hasn't looked too amazing you know our car has had the pace to win a Grand Prix here or there but not consistently but uh, you know consistently he's just not really shown up too much it's almost like he's struggling in the traffic here but right now in the lead he's getting away quite massively because these two are scrapping away so hard and amazingly are still side by side amazing action between Sergio Perez and Verstappen Verstappen on the left Perez on the right and Verstappen will just about get that through Perez have to slot in the P3 then so a far starting Dutchman there gets up from P4 to P2 in about two three laps there and Weber at the moment struggling for that pace that got him the pole position yesterday on Saturday now we move on to lap number three we're closing up to Leclerc and this whole train here as Verstappen now is defensive a little bit it seems like against Weber and Weber's got the 
overtake done on Perez at least, so the McLaren now may be losing some pace, but you can see for me, my main concern right now in this train is making sure the engine doesn't overheat too much, and so we're going down to standard and even lean mixture at places in the circuit, just to make sure the, uh, the kind of engine doesn't get too cooked, and so at the moment it's very much uh, dirty FS and DRS train fest here, as we move on to lap number 6 then, 3 laps later, still in this pack then, following Leclerc, Perez has managed to re-overtake Verstappen there, and Leclerc, oh, Leclerc almost breaks you, as, as he enters the pit lane very awkwardly, last minute uh, stop uh, go it would be for him, and so we're up into P5 then, but uh, Butler right on the back of us there, but now we have to try and do the best uh, in lap we can, as we're going to come in on this next lap then, Leclerc's probably going to get a decent undercut there with uh, the clean air, but we come in then on that end of that lap number 7, Verstappen has continued on it seems like, Weber's in, uh, and also Butler behind is in with us then, and we're going to strap on a set of medium tires, which should hopefully gets through to the end of uh, of this kind of dry period because I think the rain should be coming soon enough that these mediums should be able to go the distance and we can just slot straight onto the green uh, the green wet tyres but of course that's easier said than done but here we go now out of the pit lane and Leclerc is going to remain ahead of us there and he gains a little bit of time there as Butler comes out and he's behind Lando Norris so the undercuts work wonders for the Brit there in the other McLaren and he's jumped uh, Devin Butler and so now we go chasing after Leclerc once more and as you might have just seen on those panning shots there there are quite a few cars four or five of them ahead of Leclerc so that might just slow him down and push him towards us so we can kind of use this to our advantage to try and overtake him when we catch him napping somewhat because you can see here he tries to go around the outside of the Alfa Romeo whilst Magnussen and Grosjean are side by side we get a great exit off their overtake mode rich mix there fine margins between Leclerc and Kofi and we made some contact with Leclerc and the car's round and the car has lost all sense of balance we narrowly just miss smashing the car into the barrier though so we can keep on going and uh, carry on at the German Grand Prix but we've spun out and we're down to last place P20 and now we've got absolute ages to make up to the next car which is Lando Norris there and what on earth went on there as we close up to Leclerc he cut across the racing line a little bit and I think that there was a fine might of contact between my front wing and his uh, rear end the gearbox and kind of the rain light essentially and I think that spun us out there as we like look aboard with Leclerc I don't think Leclerc really felt anything but this is what happened with him so obviously he's side by side with Kofi out there he's trying to make the move on him he cuts into tucking behind the Alfa Romeo and at that point I think I was too close to his rear end so when he cut in there to slot in behind the Alfa Romeo he chopped off across my front end and tapped me on the rear and you can uh, on the front you can see there but his rear left tire tapped the very front of my front nose cone and you can see from this angle this is the best angle in the house there you'll definitely see us make contact here as you can see he cuts across and there just that little jolt of acceleration because as he cut across to slot in behind the Alfa Romeo he probably let off the throttle I did not because I wasn't expecting him to slow down that much and because of that I just well my front wing hit his rear tyre and the rotation I guess of the rear tyre kind of forced my front end to go a little bit wobbly I tried to correct him obviously at that speed when you're going opposite lock it's just so hard to catch the car because you're going flat out you're not expecting to have to go and catch the car that kind of speed and that kind of corner because that's usually flat out in quality very easily and flat out in the race really easily so uh, yeah a uh, very annoying spin uh, frustrated with Leclerc but it, it wasn't really fully his fault to be fair it's just kind of a racing incident really but uh, we also have to count ourselves very lucky the fact that we didn't spin off right there into the wall on the right hand side but now we carry on and try to do our best here obviously never say never in Formula 1 so you just keep on going and try to do the best job you can but we've got a very long race weekend ahead of us now although one bit of motivation and saving grace here is up ahead of us is Nico Hulkenberg on the hard tyres he's going very slowly indeed he's away from the pack so I believe he must have had some sort of incident as well so the man who was leading the championship only a few episodes ago and is still very much in the championship hunt uh, this season is down in P19 and he's going very slow. This just can't be his pace on just hard tyres. He's got an issue with his car. I don't know if it's a front wing damage or just mechanical failure as we are nearly held up by him through the last two corners. We make a undercut move on the right hand side. They're open DRS and we'll make the move stick into turn one. So we're up into P19 then on lap 11. So we've still got two thirds of this Grand Prix to go and we're P19 and by P thir uh, lap 13, two laps later, we're starting to see the pack ahead of us. And you can see they're ghastly actually making a very aggressive move is he, did he see that guys in the distance he went from the right to the left very very aggressively there made a very nice move on Kofiya there and this pack is only just ahead of us so this car has some decent pace which is even more annoying really to be fair the fact that uh, in clean air this car clearly has a lot of pace I, I believe at the moment Hamilton is still out in the lead dominating this Grand Prix so it's just so annoying to know that you know that spin basically has uh, duped us out of what 
what would have been a very strong race, I think, uh, as a whole. But now we've got an entirely different race on our hands. We're going to try and recover positions and overtake these slower cars. So much like in football, you can only play what's in front of you. And so we can only drive and do the race that's in front of us, which is uh, this one right now in P19. We take it nice and easy into turn one. It's going to be maybe two wide, three wide is Gasly and uh, Stroll there. I think that is in the racing point car. Go side by side and myself and Kafiat nip down the inside. Then we go down the inside of Dan Kafiat there. So the Russian probably thought, OK, I can get two free positions here. And then I thought I'll get all three in one foul swoop. So a mega bit of driving there. The patience paid out for us as we entered uh, turn one. I could just see there was going to be some contact there. So I thought I'll just kind of take it easy, nip to the inside, get the three positions. We do have to go a little bit defensive on the inside of the, of the next hairpin, though, because Kafia actually had some decent pace in that Alfa Romeo. But we do remain and defend that position for P16. And now we're starting to close up on Lando Norris. So, uh, yeah, you've got a lot of top cars actually down the order here. You know, you've got Gasly, Stroll, Hulkenberg, uh, Norris, all in kind of top uh, kind of top end cars, uh, kind of battling out here uh, for the kind of last places. So very baffling, actually, as we now send one down into Lando Norris. He's got no pace there. Uh, so it's all, it's all rather surprising. So I don't know if all of us got an incident or all of us just got very unlucky with the pit stops or whatever whatever's happened here but we're now up into p14 as we now uh, easily take magnuson uh, for that position there with drs open and overtake mode going and so now we've got a bit of clean air to chase after look who it is charles leclerc is the next car up there and we actually catch him up at the end of that same lap lap 15 because grosjean and the likes of the cars ahead of him of the ferrari as well going so slowly in this gp look at the pace difference here i mean grosjean coming into the pit stop there almost does a deja vu moment of me getting brake trapped by Leclerc into that second last corner to the last corner but uh, the pace difference between some of these midfield cars and the top cars here and uh, the Toro Rosso is not even a top car but obviously the Leclerc has got some decent pace as he qualified in, the, in Q3 of course but uh, the, the pace difference between some of these cars is absolutely ridiculous how slow they're going through some of these corners compared to how I was going in clean air which uh, again just reiterates how frustrating it was to be spun by this man right here as we overtake him who get a little bit close to him and wobble around uh, the front end there, just letting him know that I'm a little bit peeved off that he spun us out there, but we get him back, and so that's kind of good karma for us, I guess, to get him back in this uh, in this Grand Prix, but it just shows what could have been, but the clouds are now coming out, and so the rain is going to be on its way only a matter of time, so we've got to watch out for that, and that's an entirely different kettle of fish in this Grand Prix, because I don't know if this pay I don't know if I'm going to have the same pace in the wet as we do right now in the dry, but for now we carry uh, on chasing after the cars ahead of us, Ricardo going very slow in the Ferrari, we tried to go for a bit of a kind of a switch move and try to straighten the car faster. It doesn't really work out, to be fair, but we still get a good enough exit to open DRS, overtake mode, Rich Mix going, and we're going to overtake him. And actually, that Ferrari's got front wing damage there, so that might also be the answer to why the likes of him and Grosjean were holding up Leclerc so much. But by the time we move on to lap number 20, the rain is starting to come down. A little bit of a mistake there that was for me in front of the Mercedes grandstand. We almost went completely cleanly off circuit there as the track's getting quite slippery. You can see a lot of understeer through this right-hander in sick gear, nearly going off completely off circuit there. And by the time we get to lap 22, the rain is now really coming down at full pelt. We have a bit of a wobble on the exit onto the back straight. And Lucas Weber in the Renault now has a great exit on us. We're up into P5 here because a few cars, including Weber, have pit again for dry tyres. Weber was up in P2 or P3, I believe. But he's pit for a second time for a fresh set of mediums about five laps ago. Bit of a stupid decision by him. Of course, now he's got fresh tyres, so he's going to out-traction me. But we're doing the best job we can to kind of defend against him. We have to go full lift off there as I do not have the confidence and the grip to go flat out on that right-hander, but neither does Weber, and so we just about uh, managed to keep that P5, but again, as we move on to lap 23, the hairpin, very slow stuff there in first gear, just can't even get the nose turned in as the grip has fallen away. My engineer has asked me to come in for the intermediate tyres now on this lap, so we've just got to tiptoe to the pit stop here, but I have a sense that Weber is uh, wanting to attack, and you can see it's a dull lock-up for us uh, on the front left there, really bad lock-up, and so Weber gets it down the inside. We almost spin the car out, and we have to use Weber as a bit of a wall to keep the car going in a straight line there we've got a warning for a collision it's a bit of a, obviously hard and fast racing as we're all struggling for grip so I don't think you can kind of blame me too much there for half spinning out I mean Weber was just there just, just, you know which is apparently there obviously if he wasn't there I would have span out but he just was so uh, I just was able to use him as a bit of a barrier there so we're still in P5 and we're going to still just about manage to get through to the end of this lap and make the pits off intermediate here but it's been fine fine margins so far but all in all I think you can say it's been a fantastic recovery for us to be in P5 of course we've been helped out by a few cars like Weber that have pit for a second time for dry tyres before the Inters come up, come through so that was a little bit of a mistake by a few cars in the top 10 but we've used it obviously we get a little bit of luck with that we get held up a little bit there by the Ferrari and so as we go down the pit lane we are going to stay ahead of Weber but we get jumped 
by Leclerc. The Toro Rosso gets a lot of time on everyone, really. Everyone get held up by, uh, apart from Leclerc. And so now he's jumped us for P5. So that's uh, even more annoying than usual because, of course, that's the man that, you know, obviously caused me to have that spin. So it's a bit frustrating that he's now ahead of me. And lap 28, I've got no chance of catching him because the pace just isn't there. You, know, you guys know I'm not too great in the wet anyway in general on the F1 games. But at the moment, it's really struggling as the rain is coming down pretty hard. And remember, there was a forecast for heavy rain at the end of this race. So I feel like already... The, the rain levels are kind of kind of transitioning from inters to full wets, but we're all still in these green inters because you may as well try and finish the race at the moment. But uh, I'm just trying to skate through and stay ahead of Weber, but Leclerc just checked out here. So the, the max we can hope for is P6. Let's remember at one point we're, we were in last place, so I'm not going to complain about being P6 from last place, but obviously it's frustrating not to keep the position against Charles Leclerc. But Weber now is trying to spoil the party for P6 even as we're going to go down to P7 momentarily as he tries to make the overtake on the left hand side there he gets the uh, break zone a little bit better than we do on the entry but then on the exit I, uh, I'm just able to kind of squeeze him out and use the position I have on track there with a better racing line to maintain the P6 but as we go on then through to the last lap of this Grand Prix you can see here now that the track is darker the clouds are darker and you can see the rain physically is coming down a lot harder in the sky and it's now fully full wet so if this race went for any longer we would all be pitting probably two laps ago for the full wet tyres but alas we're still in inters because we have to go to the end of the Grand Prix there's no point pitting right now and so we're just trying to uh, tiptoe around basically even more so than before but look at that Lewis Hamilton wins his first Grand Prix of the season a bit of a mad, bad, mad statement to say that that's his first Grand Prix win of the season but it is his first win of the season here uh, for Mercedes and in such dominant fashion to be fair he's absolutely bossed this entire race weekend from second place led into turn one and then just led the entire way I think that is uh, but for us to be fair I'm still very very chuffed with our race result P6 from what was P20 facing the wrong way uh, on the circuit on the side of the circuit early on in this Grand Prix it's a decent decent recovery I'll very much take that well, P6 that's a disappointing result for sure but we'll try to bounce back at the next one The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Looking at the full race results, though, you can see how much Hamilton dominated. 21 seconds ahead of Verstappen there. It's all very close, actually, after that, from Verstappen to Perez and Butler. But Hamilton, wow. I, I haven't seen his AI drive like that since maybe, like, season one or season two, maybe. Kind of good to see, really, because that's why I wanted to move to Mercedes, you know, to have a good scrap with, you know, the multiple world champion, Lewis Hamilton. Of course, we have that mega scrap at Austria, but we haven't really seen him perform to the, his full AI potential so far this season. But that definitely was a uh, dominant dominance play. Bit of a scary one, really. So if that continues, that's going to be maybe an issue for me later on in this season. But that's going to aid the team as a whole as we move up into second place of the Constructors' Championship now uh, ahead of Renault and Red Bull. So good news for us. But just going back to the Drivers' Championship, we remain in P2. Perez is able to gain points on us, of course. So that gap is growing as the gaps behind us, though, close up a little bit. You've got Hulkenberg, Gasly, Verstappen, Weber, and, uh, and Norris all very close together. And you've got to say Butler and Hamilton. I mean, Hamilton especially. If Hamilton goes on to win another way, a race or something, he could be right up there with where Weber and Verstappen is, and so you've got maybe like a four, six-way fight for the title, potentially, but at the moment, Perez, you've got to admit, is in the driving seat, 19 points ahead of us there. I think for the sake of everyone, we're hoping that Perez has a bad race in the next few episodes, basically, but uh, all in all, uh, like I said, fr from where we were at one point in the race, I really can't complain. That was a pretty uh, well awesome recovery, actually. We got very lucky, I will admit, with other cars pitting twice for dry tyres, but you've got to have that rub of the green sometimes in Formula 1. 
one. And uh, I I'm happy that we, we were able to stick in and just kind of not give up because it could have been very easy for me just to kind of be like, oh, we're last place by a mile. It's, uh, the race is over. There's no point continuing on. But we, uh, we plowed on and we got a very decent position. So at the end of this episode, then we're going to go ahead and purchase another reliability upgrade on the energy store because I feel like it needs it in general. Uh, and there's no point really purchasing anything else because obviously we've, uh, we've already purchased that final breaks upgrade uh, that will come in in th uh, two episodes time now. So guys, if you did enjoy that episode, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, subscribe for weekly full-on content. I've been over. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.